Welcome to VectorVest special presentation this week titled Turning Up the Volume on Contra ETFs. My name is Todd Schaefer, Manager of Research for VectorVest, and I'll be your presenter this evening. Contra ETFs are perennial favorites for trading a bearish market. It's a topic we've covered many times in the past. One of those presentations was from August 19th of 2022, delivered by Steve Chappell, which covered the basics of trading country TFs. And I'll refer you to that presentation so we can dispense with some of the basics. In our presentation tonight, we're going to leverage some of his key takeaways. In particular, number one, make sure you know what the ETF represents, especially in our case tonight, to avoid overlapping positions that cover the same underlying instrument. Make sure you have adequate volume. There are many thinly traded ETFs of all stripes. And for trading success, have signal. Trade with the market's trend and exit on its reversal. And finally, protect profits with basic money management rules. And I would add the other side of that coin is to manage risk. So let's see what country ETFs look like inside of VectorVest and orient ourselves for tonight's exercise. So from the home page of VectorVest, I'm going to go over to the Viewers tab, and I'm going to the Sector Viewer. ETFs are all housed in one sector. If I right click on the ETF sector and look at the industries in the sector, I can see the ETF sectors are further broken down by industry. And we have all the contra ETFs inside the ETF short industry. If I look at the stocks within that industry, all of these stocks are contra ETFs in that they move inverse to their underlying. So a contra ETF on the Dow symbol S Dow, this will go up when the Dow goes down. And so one of the benefits of trading contra ETFs is that you buy them long. And since they don't require margin, you can trade them even in retirement accounts. So remember Steve's first piece of advice was make sure you understand what the ETF covers. Because there are many vendors to the industry that are offering their own version of a country ETF that covers, for instance, the S&P 500 or the Dow 30. And of course, with our abbreviations, maybe it's not clear exactly what the ETF tracks. So simply look to right click and go to our stock analysis report to get a quick explanation of what the fund is tracking. Now this list is a list of stock symbols, so by default it's sorted VST descending. But remember Steve's second piece of advice was to make sure that we see average volumes sufficient to provide liquidity for the trade. So ZIVZF has average volume of 658 shares. One you'd probably want to avoid, and there are several at the top of the list that have low volumes. So let's make sure we avoid those. And by the way, since we're sorted by VST, ETFs, because they often don't even hold any stocks, don't have fundamental analysis. So we keep them neutral with RV and RS scores at one. So essentially the VST sort is one of RT. And when you have a tie in the RT score, then the secondary sort is by symbol. So this is our industry sector organization for ETFs, but our database team also curates a group of watch lists for ETFs. So remember in these watch lists then we'll include both regular and contra ETFs. You'll also see this watch list of contra contra ETFs. And these are contra ETFs in that they move inverse from their underlying, but they often don't have market correlation. Gold, silver, the VIX. 
If we scroll lower, we see we also have them by their vendor. We also have them for whether they're leveraged or unleveraged. So particularly for our use today, non-leveraged ETFs contra, these would all be contra ETFs that have no leverage. Scrolling higher, we saw contra ETFs with two times leverage. They will move twice as far as the underlying or three times leverage. They'll move three times as far as the underlying. Unfortunately, both up and down. So with that leverage, we'll make faster gains if we're directionally correct, but of course it'll move more quickly against us when that move is over. But these watch lists create useful divisions to cherry pick and use in the Unisearch tool. So let's move to the Unisearch tool. And if we scroll down, we'll see that there is an ETF folder. By the way, the ETF challenge was a customer contest that we did a while back. But ETFs then have both bullish and bearish searches that are ETF focused. And I'll repeat one more time, even though they're bearish trades, we're going to buy contra ETFs long. No margin is required. So let's take a look at the searches that are preloaded in your program for buying country ETFs, starting off with the appropriately named buying country ETFs. It's a bear strategy that finds ETFs in the industry group ETF short. The search is sorted by VST ascending, which puts the country ETFs with the lowest combination of value, safety, and timing at the top of the list, the lowest RT scores. We see the search doing that. We have a filter that says, let's make sure that the stocks that the Unisearch finds are in the ETF short industry group. They have a price of at least a dollar and at least 100,000 shares of average volume. So those concerns we were looking at in the watch list, the Unisearch is going to make sure that we're in the right industry group and that we have minimal price and volume requirements to make these candidates. We want them to be on the major exchanges by eliminating the pink sheets. And we want to eliminate contra contra ETFs since they don't necessarily have market correlation. And as the description in the comment section says, the sort is VST ascending. If I click run search on today's data, Here are the country ETFs that the search is finding today. And with a quick casual look, I can see that there are two that are following the cues. So here's a case where they're both tracking the cues. They're both from the same vendor, ProShares, but they have different leverages. So this search, because of the sort VST ascending, is bringing low RT values to the top. This is kind of a bottom fishing approach where we're looking for these country ETFs that have been beaten down in the preceding uptrend that are still at the lower end of their price trend. Our next search, named country ETFs no 3x, looks for stocks that have average volume above 20,000 shares, so a much smaller average volume number. And they are either 2x or 1x country ETFs. In other words, we've eliminated the three times leveraged. And we're sorting them RT times CI descending. So the strongest combination of uptrend and persistence of trend come to the top of the list. But now we're using that watch list filter to be more selective in the stocks that are coming back. High average volume country ETFs looks for price and volume minimums, but now changes the sort to average volume descending. So it brings the country ETFs with the highest average volumes to the top of the list. So a little more restrictive than the country ETFs no 3x, but still a relatively simple search. The power is in the sort. Next, we come down to index ETFs contra. 
So there, these are contra ETFs that follow the major indices. They have to have an average volume is over 100,000 shares. They need to be in the watch list index ETFs contra. We're also using a moving average to try to catch these guys as they begin their uptrend, where the five bar moving average of price has crossed above the 10 bar in the last five days, both moving higher. And then stock volume greater than zero. So actual traded shares the day that we run the search, it had trading activity in support of average volume of 100,000 shares. And we're sorting VST ascending, just as we did in buying country ETFs. And if we continue scrolling down at the bottom, we have worst performing country ETFs. The search parameters are the same that we had for buying country ETFs, but in this version, we've changed the sort to find the weakest combination of RT and price persistence. So the Unisearch tool can streamline your search and of course, you can go beyond these canned searches and create your own variations, create your own watch lists, and really customize this for the kinds of ETFs that you want to trade. So let's take a look at our next consideration, which was signal, market trend. And for this part of the study, I want to use the back tester. I ran a series of back tests for each of the searches over the past one year time frame using all of our market timing signals. I saved the best performing test for each of the searches. And there are a couple interesting observations. The first observation is that high average volume contra ETFs was by far the best performing of the searches overall which was what inspired me to call this presentation turning up the volume on contra ETFs. But that makes sense. Not only do we want to make sure that we have adequate average volumes at a minimum, but high volumes also would indicate market interest. That being said, however, all of the searches have done well over the past year because we got the direction right. My second observation is that all of them, the best performing market timing signal was the green light buyer RT kicker timing signal. So let's review that signal and the settings for all of these back tests, looking at the high average volume contras back test. We'll click the edit button. And here are the settings for the back test. We had a hundred thousand dollar portfolio, we're charging no commissions. Here's the trading system overview and the test period, but let's customize the trading system so we can see the details of the system. First of all, we're using the Greenlight Buyer RT Kicker timing signal. It has three conditions, up, down, and neutral. Up signals are given when a green light is signaled in the price column of the color guard and the relative timing kicker is established when the following condition occurs while analyzing the vector vest composite. The 10 day moving average of RT is greater than the 15 day moving average of RT. SMA is a simple moving average. So that's the up signal, but of course we're interested in the down signal. Down signals are given when the confirmed call changes to down. Neutral signals, or any time when there's not a green light signaled in the color guard that's been confirmed and the confirmed signal and the confirmed call did not become confirmed down. So for each of these conditions, we have a set of rules. So when we get an up signal, we're going to move back to cash. When we get a confirmed down signal, we will buy high average volume contra ETFs, whatever the search returns on that day. We'll not have any stops. We're going to open 10 positions in the portfolio. We're buying all 10 of those at the same time. 
when we get a fresh down signal, we're not going to close any open positions. We're going to invest the average portfolio value in each position. And we'll limit the percentage of stocks average volume to 10%. When we get the neutral signal, then we'll take no action. So those are the rules for the trading system. If we come back out to the back tester, let's take a look at the equity curve to see how that played out. So over this one year time frame, this trading plan had 80% winners, an overall gain of 79.58%, which annualizes to the same number just about because it was a one year test, and had a max drawdown of 12.8%. Looking at the equity curve, we have our nice stair step where we continue to hit higher highs except for this most recent turn where we're trading about flat. More on that in a minute. I've overlaid our green light buyer timing signals on the equity curve for this portfolio. So we can see we entered the market with 10 country ETFs on the 12th. Notice the volatility in some of these turns. All right, so the portfolio value can take some pretty big swings with these more volatile trades. We closed on the first kicker green light. Wrote out the uptrended market in cash. The market started to move down again with a confirmed down call. We bought another tranche of 10 Contra ETFs. Got out at the next green light kicker. So let me try to demonstrate why this market timing signal was the most successful of the signals available to us and support Steve's admonition that we want to trade with the market's trend. So let's take a look at a market timing graph. I'm simply looking at the price over our same one year time frame, and let's put on our green light buyer RT kicker timing signals. So starting from the left side, we had our first confirmed down call on the 12th of April. And notice the big move, the extended move to the downside that we enjoyed, even though it had some volatility in it. And we got out at our first kicker green. We sat out this next up wave, or presumably played the market to the upside. And on our next confirmed down call, we got another extended move to the downside, which finally ended when we got our first kicker green. So do you notice how asymmetrical this is a big move to the downside and then closing the positions early in the counter move. Our next signal didn't extend as well before we get our next kicker green. And of course, currently we have our confirmed down call. We haven't gotten a kicker green yet. And with the recent follow through to the downside, we're starting to see that equity curve trending higher. We'll see how that plays out. But we can see the benefit of the extended move and our exit early on the counter trend. So particularly when we're trading these leveraged country ETFs, that can really work for us if we get the direction right. It can really work against us, however, if we get it wrong or hold too long into the counter trend. Extended moves will outperform short reversals. And so if you think about it, in bull market scenarios, when you have a short-lived pullback in the market action before you get another extended leg to the upside, country ETFs often underperform in those markets simply because the downward move doesn't extend. So the green light buyer RT kicker is working so well because it captures the major down thrust to get the gains and is closing soon after the bottom. Let's compare, right? Think, well, okay, the green light buyer RT kicker. What about if I just use the green light buyer? Let's run through the same scenario. The first turn, we had our confirmed down call, but we had this one little green light poke its head in there, which would have stopped us out prematurely, and we would have missed the extension of the move. 
These other turns in the middle still worked about the same, but our current trend, we just had a green light two days ago, would have knocked us out. So to the best of our ability, we want to favor downward market moves that are likely to extend and avoid entering late in the cycle where you're likely to get knocked out on the reversal signal after the market bottoms. So particularly if we're making late entries or taking on replacement positions, mitigate that risk by starting small. And that brings us to our final takeaway, protect profits and manage risk with basic portfolio rules. We don't want to be overly restrictive because these country ETFs do have elevated volatilities, particularly the leveraged versions, so they need some room to breathe. So looser stops are better, but you still need to control risk to define maximum risk to the portfolio, but also to capture profits. So first, let's define our maximum risk with a fixed percentage stop loss. So I'm going to strike a copy of our back test and I'm going to go into the details. In our automation rules for the downside, we're going to now populate our stop criteria. And let's just use a percentage gain loss. And so I don't want to limit the upside. So I'm going to set that to 999. And I'm going to limit my loss to a fixed 10%. So now this stock price can bounce all around. If it falls below 10% from my cost basis, I'll close out the trade. On a 10 stock portfolio, that would represent a 1% loss to the portfolio value on that particular trade. Let's click finish and let's modify our name to 999 slash 10. So my naming convention helps me remember the settings and let's click finish and run. So here we see the results. It did knock down our percentage winners from 80% to 75. So we got knocked out of a trade and it lowered our percentage gain loss. It also made a slight improvement to our drawdown. But the biggest benefit now is that I have defined my maximum risk to the portfolio of about 10% if all 10 positions all fell to their maximum stop loss. Let's do a second version. And let's change this one to a 15% stop loss. Come back into the details. Finish and run. That actually did a little better, although still within the same ballpark in terms of performance. Here, I would now have a 1.5% exposure per position with that 15% stop loss. So again, it's not a game changer, but it is a game changer in terms of defining the maximum risk exposure of my portfolio. Otherwise, I'm accepting unlimited risk if I'm not trading stops. Let's take a look at the holdings in the current portfolio. And here's another opportunity to limit risk. Remember we talked about overlap and I can see that I have in this portfolio currently two S&P 500 based Contras and three country ETFs based on the Qs. If we eliminated those overlapping stocks and traded fewer positions, we'd have less risk on the table. If we're entering late or replacing into the later stages of the move, we can also step into the positions a few at a time to limit the risk. In other words, start small. And that would include smaller positions, take on half size positions, for instance, and add to them as they become more profitable. So let's make sure you know what the ETFs represent that you're trading. Make sure you have adequate volumes. Make sure that you are trading with the market's trend and protect your profits and your risk management with basic money management rules. Country ETFs are a perennial favorite for trading bearish markets, and I think you can see why as all of them offered a great opportunity to capitalize on downtrending markets.
And that's been true for Contra ETF since we introduced them way back in 2007. So thanks for joining me in this special presentation. Have a great night.